Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 4, Episode 5 Thoughts. This episode is called Lockup. Another episode I love, like most MCU things, certainly every episode of this show so far. Spoilers throughout this video for everything MCU leading up to and including this episode, but not for anything that came out after this episode first premiered. Not anything MCU. Yeah, let's dive right in. So, let's see. Yeah, the... I appreciate that when they, f just before they find the, the dark hold, like they're so close. This is, this is like in the rules of attraction where like the, ah, what's his name again? Is it, is it Sean? Hold on, hold on. I'll have it momentarily. Uh, James Vanderbeek's character, Sean. Like, sometimes he comes so close to understanding, to, to realizing, you know, they're like, you know, if we had spent these years doing science instead of practice, you know, trying to practice black magic, maybe we would have made pro Ooh, black magic, here we go, you know, just, yeah. <laughs> it's not subtle, but it gets the point across. And, yeah, I love that the book is reading them the you know the text comes up in your first language so for him it's german for her it's english fantastic detail just yeah and let's see yeah and and back in the present we learn that lucy does have the dark hold again you know, she got the detail out of Joseph as well, that he buried it where they found it. <laughs> I like that Fitz, it's, it's very gender stereotypical, but yeah, Fitz, Simmons is upset with Fitz, so she's giving him the silent treatment, and instead of just coming out and saying, I'm sorry, I, you know, you're upset with me, I apologize for what I did, I'm trying to understand, I want to help, you know, I want to make it better. Instead, he talks about a million other things, until eventually she's like, Fitz? And, let's see, yeah, I like <laughs> Phil and May talking about, you know, he's like, you had a near-death experience. I had a death experience. I'm over it. <laughs> and, and, and yeah, you know, it's one of those things, like, yeah, I, one would wonder, you know, because he doesn't remember anything because his memories were erased and replaced. But that didn't happen to her, so what does she, you know, what did she see? And really great detail with the, the... I guess like warden or something that you know we get these little hints that there's something going on you know the 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 woman working there very intense and then the guy also intense, you know and May is picking up these little cues and she spots you know every line on the warden you know people keep trying to call the warden and he's not responding so there's something weird going on there you know and, yeah, he attacks them, tries to shoot them, thinking they're demons, so, obviously, Lucy was there. And, you know, now May and Phil have given up their weapons. Those are in lockup, and they're deep inside this, this prison, so it's just yeah, very nicely, great concept. You know, the, the writers did a fantastic job there. And, and and it's very unusual. We don't, you know, this is the first episode, you know, of, of four seasons. We've had three entire seasons of, like, 22 episodes each. This is the first time that characters we, we you know, know and care about have been, like, stuck inside a prison as there's a bunch of, you know, yeah, very, very nicely done. It's It's great when you can keep coming up with new situations to keep things fresh. <clears throat> you know there are sure there are shows that are shorter than this that that didn't get f you know three full seasons and yet they already started you know cannibalizing their earlier 
ideas, episodes. <clears throat> and let's see. The, um, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, Mac reluctantly agrees that Robbie go with to to ghost bust, as it were. And yeah, they talk about you know Daisy cannot use her quake powers. In, you know, she might break her arms, that's, yeah. Which is also really nicely, you know, again, we're, for, now, for a while now, she's been using her powers. And that's also, you know, like, her powers can, can do truly amazing things, so, yeah, the decision to have her, you know, this is, this is like, you know, Superman's kryptonite kind of thing. You know, you gotta, you gotta bring them back down to to make them relatable, so that it's not, you know, completely impossible for us to feel anything other than awe for them. And then we have the, yeah, um, the sanity injectors. I will say, I was kind of expecting that to lead to someone not being able to, to use their injection or something, but I guess it was just for the, the you know, it, it was intense. The, the, I, I appreciate that before anyone has it administered, you know, ends up being that Mac has to administer it to himself, before that, the, the, you know, we see, like, Fitz clicks the thing, and it's not just like a needle, it's like this opens, you know, and then it starts spinning, and then it explodes out, you know, just very intense. I, I honestly think they kind of overdid that. But yeah. And yeah, the lie detector scene is is great. These little, you know, would you like me to repeat the question? <laughs> and, and the, you know, and she's like, oh, shit, oh, it's so broad. Like, there's been a lot of, you know, just, yeah. And the thing with, you know, have you ever worked for Hydra? Absolutely. <laughs> And then she, she, you know, undercover. And then we have the, yeah, uh, Robbie recognizes, what was the name, Fifth Street something, um, right, and the, yeah, the, the character's name is Santino Noguera. And, yeah. The, the, that's the kind of thing that you can really, yeah, you know, if you're, it's, it's, it's very logical that someone who Robbie hates, you know, for, for doing crime is in a jail in, in this area, so, yeah. And, yeah, we see that a bunch of the watchdogs are in jail and we're told, you know, they're recruiting. Which I, I do quite appreciate the point made that, you know, I mean, uh, the watchdogs, you know, there's some resemblance to the Proud Boys, you know. The, you know, they're defined by their hatred of minorities, so, yeah. And, and yeah, you know, not not I'm not saying that all the Proud Boys are, you know, ex-cons or such, but it is this thing of, you know, recruiting young, frustrated, straight white cis men. That's something that a number of groups have, have done to, yeah. And, yeah, just after they realize, oh, wow, there sure are a lot of watchdogs around here. Sure would suck if all of them were released. And then, you know, Lucy shows up with a smile and pulls the, the thing to, to open. Yeah, that was very intense. And yeah, the episode does not have a ton of empathy for prisoners. I mean, ultimately, we do learn that Santino was on his way to, to an early release, you know. But really, he's the exception, you know, according to this episode, which, yeah, Hollywood has a very checkered past. And with depicting prisoners and you know like let's keep in mind some people go to jail for like 
carrying a minuscule amount of weed on their person. You know, not every single person in jail is violent. And let's see. Right. I uh, yeah. It was very. So so. See you know yeah yeah um yes Jeffrey Jeffrey Mace heard you know so Gemma is not doing so hot on the on the lie detector test so he shows up you know can I trust you absolutely great because I really need someone I can trust right you know just fantastic and and you know props to the actor for for like you know he he does have a fairly friendly face a friendly looking face you know if you met him in person looks like the you know you'd want to shake his hand he's, he seems like a nice guy you know but an actual nice guy not a nice guy nice guy and you know he he manages to look very intense and intimidating before he reveals oh you know i just want you to help me with an interview kind of thing and then later in the episode when she blackmails him also intense face and at the very end where he Boy, he sure does get blackmailed a lot. It's that's twice in like five minutes near the end of this episode. That's like, yeah, this has got to be some kind of record. Wouldn't maybe maybe it wouldn't have been the worst thing in the world if they had come up with a different solution for one of these two situations. But whatever. The yeah, um, you know, quite yeah, I, I quite like that she's. You know, helping over the radio. And, and the thing of, you know, I think the best thing is if we could take what's in your head and put it in mine. And she's like, <laughs> I mean, S.H.I.E.L.D. doesn't have that kind of technology. Oh, but we do. And and he hands, you know, no, no it's, it's a, you know, I, I'll put an earpiece in. You've got a little microphone, you know, which, like, yeah, you know, in a manner of speaking, that's taking what's in her head and putting it in his you know, but obviously at the time, like, she and the audience are like, I don't think that's a good idea. That's not, you know, because she is keeping secrets. And and also the thing of, we're live in 15 minutes. Is okay, that's <laughs> really springing on her. And, yeah. Um, ghost Rider uses his chain, wraps, you know, wraps part of it around a ghost shoots flame up it and burns the ghost and these are the moments that I live for and then we have yeah um quite well written well handled debate scene it feels a lot like one of the you know it's very reminiscent of real life debates between you know public figures talking about like trans people you know one side is all fear mongering the other is like very you know using using logic and stats to to actually debunk it and the other person is acting like oh well you know who cares That's, yeah and so daisy closes the door breaks off the handle so that may and phil can't Go in, and then she's gonna fight all these watchdogs by herself. So, you know, yet again, like, I'm so glad that they're continuing to give Daisy all these fight scenes where she it's it's her against a bunch of people. You know, at, at this point, it's like okay, you know, if you if she's only gonna fight one person, it it has to be someone who's got like s incredible skill. So instead, let's put her up against a bunch of regular people. You know, it's like they can fight for sure. They're you know, but and and at one point, like she locked one in a fridge or something, which yeah, I guess there's a nuke coming. And <laughs> yeah, the 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 earpiece comes out and the gloves come off, and you know, it's serious. And, yeah, he does, you know, he, he comes out to the world, you know, and, and it is, again, this thing of, you know, sadly, in real life, it hasn't always led to a lot of 
positive change for minorities that there have been minorities that you know the yeah but it is at least it's, it's definitely it is one thing that that can help and and one thing that yeah we definitely need more diversity among the powerful you know there's a lot of powerful people who literally don't even understand the problems of the minorities th whose lives they can either ruin or improve and <laughs> I like the line let's argue about who should have left who to die later and yeah Robbie you know he told Mac that he can control it but he still does go for Santino. And, you know, we see not long after that actually led to him losing Eli. And that really is on him because he could have stopped Lucy. You know, it'd be one thing. It was like, oh, you know, Mac lost Eli to Lucy. Well, Mac can't kill ghosts. Robbie can. He could have... You know, but he wanted he wanted to kill this guy who who hurt his his brother. You know, very very logical. You know, you can understand wanting that catharsis. And he also wanted Eli to not know that he was the Ghost Rider, and thus he ended up. You know, this is very classic kind of you know superhero double identity stuff. And yeah, I'm here for it. Then we have the, um, yeah, you know, he, he's, it's, it's a great detail, you know, he's, he's like playing it cool, sitting there reading inside the cell, but yeah, you know, he's reformed, you know, and, and that is, there are a number of people in, in prison, and, and that's, you know, where here, you know, they're having us kind of question, you know, Ghost Rider, which is part of, you know, Ghost Rider, like Judge Dredd and, and various other comic characters, we're not supposed to just think, oh, everything they do is is amazing, you know. Sometimes the, you know, this very brutal way of handling things is not right. There are certain situations where that's, uh, yeah. And, yeah, we learn, you know, it, it was a hit and the the you know we yeah we learned Santino didn't even participate in it and yeah Ghost Rider burns him to death which scares all of the the rioting prisoners back into their cells which was a kind of amusing moment and and again just the the flesh burning away the the skull the fire just fantastic and yeah we learn he lost Eli and we see Lucy with him and yeah um, just, you know Mace says you know if I you know a team that trusts each other is a team that the what was it a team that functions some, something like that however you know, you didn't do too hot on the lie detector test. You should have another test. And the little moment, you know, she goes up and she's like, do you know what a micro, you know, I don't even remember the entire word, you know, is, director? You see, when you said you saved in Vienna, you know, just these little, just, very ni nicely done, you know, and and yeah, that you know, sadly there are a number of people who've lied about like their their military record to appear more impressive, and yeah, she she blackmails him into no more lie detector tests, which does of course also mean you know she's going to be able to to be more direct in helping the rest of the the team. She doesn't have to keep hiding things from from the lie detector for Mace. And then we have the Yeah, yeah, May and Daisy talk 
about how, you know, Coulson cares too much to let something happen to them, and we get, you know, Lincoln wouldn't want you to do this, which, you know, yeah, very, very nicely done, because that is very much the kind of thing, you know, like, if Daisy did get, you know, and end up getting herself killed because she didn't, she wasn't careful enough, and there is an afterlife, and I don't mean the one that Jia Ying set up, you know, she would meet Lincoln up there, and he'd be like, so what are you doing here? I thought I thought I saved your life so you could go on living for a really long time. And he's going to yell at her for all of eternity. So, let's see. And, yeah, we see Lucy wants Eli to read the Dark Hole since she can't herself. And he does activate it. And the episode ends. And then we get the post credit scene of more blackmail and yeah I do I really appreciate that we get you know we're told he was a model prisoner set for early re you know looking at it early release until Ghost Rider came and murdered him you know it wasn't a it wasn't a fight he didn't have a fair chance <clears throat> you know neither did Gabe but Santino wasn't part of that and let's see the um, yes, MDB trivia for this episode. Letters on the dark hold form an ambigram. That is, it is the same word even when turned upside down. Not to be confused with a palindrome. <laughs> when Lucy and John are looking for and find the dark hold, one of the walls has a poster for Quentin Carnival, a clear nod to Ghost Rider Johnny Blaze. Peter Fonda's Captain America helmet from Easy Riders on the shelf one minute and 17 seconds into the episode. Peter Fonda played the devil in Ghost Rider. And... Let's see. Right, so yeah, in the comics, the Dark Hole first appeared in Marvel Spotlight number four. The very next issue was the first appearance of the original Ghost Rider, Johnny Blaze. When Robbie enters Santino in Aguirre's cell, Santino is reading a Spanish-language copy of Stephen King's Pet Cemetery. And... Parminda Nagra and Jason Omara both co-starred with Sarah Jones. Nagra and Jones on Alcatraz, Omara and Jones on Vegas. And, <laughs> yeah, the introduction to Director Mace in the TV debate included that he is a patriot. In the comics, Jeffrey Mace is known as the Patriot. Oh, right, yes, of course. Yeah, the episode reveals Mace became a public hero after the bombing of a United Nations meeting in Vienna, which was depicted in Civil War. Mace was one of the many diplomats at the meeting, was photographed saving another's life. However, the episode does indicate that Mace may not be telling the truth about this. Yeah, of course that's the... I don't know why I didn't... Yeah, not everything on this show is a direct reference to one of the movies, but that was... Yeah. And... That is about... It for this one. I should be able to... Do a, an episode video tomorrow... And, yeah, closing with a few of my favorite lines from the episode. Fitz said they were close. I don't want to close, I want to hear. And, let's see. Uh, yeah, Robbie says, I don't take orders. Then this will be a new experience. You can't keep me here. Maybe not. But if you take this plane down, you'll be burning up the only people in the world trying to help you. And... Let's see... Yeah, um... I quite like when Coulson... Let's see, the... the yeah, uh, Fury had no problem only opening Pandora's box from time to time, but even he was afraid of this thing. It's powerful, it's deadly, now probably in the hands of a pissed-off mad scientist ghost. So, thoughts, feelings? This is a safe space. And, yeah, when, when Robbie says, I need to get off this plane now, 
and Daisy looks up, that should put you in rural Utah. And you think you're pissed off now. <laughs>